Good evening, good morning, good night, uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. I am Kale Royer with Tree Stuff. Uh, I am uh, here today with Evan Sims from Planet Geo. He's going to be talking about a really cool product. He's going to be talking about using GIS systems to uh, make your ability to um, do your job easier, I guess, and, and make a lot more money. Uh, first, I need to talk about some Tree Stuff stuff. Uh, if you don't already know, you can see where all of our webinars are, uh, when all of our webinars are going to be going on, uh, treestuff.com slash webinar. Uh, and uh, what we have coming up soon, we have a webinar with Nick Araya, The Boring Business Secrets. Uh, Nick Araya is another California arborist, uh, just like Evan is. Uh, he is going to be talking about how his business works, how he does um, some of his estimates and things like that, how he charges customers. He's got a really interesting business plan that I think is uh, really interesting for uh, most people, especially like Midwest and stuff, to, to hear about and how he works. Uh, then we have a Samson Lunch and Learn coming up uh, on the 15th of next month. Uh, they're going to be talking about some of the cool stuff coming out at Samson and answering any questions that you might have. Um, other than that, uh, we've got a Bear Valley coming up in April. Uh, Bear Valley is our one of our clothing partners now that we we sell their products. Uh, they're from the UK. They're really cool, really neat. Go check their stuff out. He's going to be talking a lot about how they make uh, their clothing specifically for arborists um, and what they're working on with new tech technologies and stuff. It's really cool. Uh, the other thing is on the front side of our website, if you go just at treestuff.com, you'll see a big uh, ad about our flash sale that's currently going on. It will end Sunday. It was supposed to end last Sunday, uh, but we added some stuff onto it and um, added some time onto it now. So it's it will definitely end Sunday night. Um, get There's over 125 different uh, individual items, the, the different SKUs. They're all marked down. Um, and then you can also get an extra 15% off all of that stuff that's marked down. You can go to the sales and specials category, or there's a, a category called double discount on the side of the website uh, that you can go to, and that will show you all of uh, the stuff that is actually on this sale. So without any further ado, I'm going to uh, flip it over here to Evan in a second. And uh, he is going to tell you a little bit about what Planet Geo does, uh, his history as an arborist, and uh, then we can we can teach you some cool stuff and get you some CEUs at the end. So stick around for those CEUs. I'll post a quiz in the comments uh, after we're done with this broadcast, and then you have about 24 hours uh, to earn two CEUs from that. Afterwards, uh, you can still earn CEUs by taking it, but you will only be able to use earn one CEU. Uh, so, Evan, we are switching over to you in five, four, three, two, one, go. All right. Can you hear me okay, Kale? All right, cool. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining. Um, thanks very much to Tree Stuff uh, for inviting us to present at this webinar. Um, it, obviously, they uh, one of the premier equipment companies, um, equipment suppliers out there. I know I used to order a lot of equipment back in my old climbing days. I'd like to be climbing still, but uh, I'm in a different different role here now. So uh, thanks very much to Tree Stuff. Uh, really happy to be here. Uh, as Kale mentioned, uh, there is CEU quiz. And if you are a note taker, I uh, tried to do a good job of highlighting in yellow, maybe some of the key things you'll want to jot down uh, for the most successful CEU quiz taking. Um, so uh, I'm Evan Sims again, uh, as Kale mentioned. Let me get my slide show working. Um, I manage the uh, sales team uh, at our company, Planet Geo. Um, my, a little bit of my background, I am an arborist by trade. Uh, I've been in the green industry uh, from golf course maintenance to nursery work, uh, and, and then mostly in the arboriculture world is where I've worked. Uh, I was a tree climber, uh, most notably the San Diego Zoo, one of the coolest jobs I ever had. Uh, if I had a nickel for every time some dad looked up and said, hey, son, look at the monkey up in the tree, uh, I'd, I'd be a very rich man, I'd be retired by now. But um, 
that was an awesome job. And then I worked for a couple uh, tree care companies here locally in San Diego. I had my own uh, arborist consulting business for a bit. And then uh, when I came across Planet Geo, because I was looking at mapping solutions for my business, I really liked what they were doing and where they were going. And I decided to hitch my wagon to their train. So here I am today um, at Planet Geo. So our company, just briefly before we get into the fun stuff, um, we uh, like to consider ourselves an urban forestry and technology company. So where urban forestry and, and tree care and technology meet uh, is where you'll find a lot of our solutions. Uh, we have various software products available. You can go check them out on planetgeo.com to explore more. Shameless plug. And let's dive in. Um, just another housekeeping item. Um, Kel, I'm, I don't have up the uh, Facebook or YouTube lives, so though comments. So if there's any comments that come through or questions, I'm happy to kind of keep this open. Uh, I don't need to be talking at you for an hour. Uh, so if you have a question, post that in the comments. Uh, Kale will let me know and uh, maybe ask some of his own questions, but uh, I, I definitely do not want to be sit here talking to you, talking at you for an hour. So participation is welcome. Comments, questions, uh, all, all all welcome. Uh, okay, so what are we going to be talking about today? What is GIS? Let's talk about that first. That's where we start. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about sales and estimating, and then safe and efficient operations. Um, we wrote an ebook. This is uh, a lot of the a couple of these presentations came off an ebook that we that we wrote on the on our website. Uh, and here, this couple of the takeaways from that ebook is uh, service di differentiation. I think that's probably one of the most important um, business tools. Oh, looks like my video has frozen. My phone got hot. Sorry, everybody in the East Coast or Midwest. It's warm here in San Diego, and my phone is shutting down. Anyway, you know what I look like? Maybe you can just take my video down. <laughs> For the time being, sorry about that. Um, so, uh, but the slide, is, I think, is still live. Let's see. Okay. Uh, so, service differentiation, I think this is the main way that businesses can be successful. How are you different from your competition? Why should I choose you versus somebody else? So, we'll be talking a lot about how you differentiate your business, again, in the context of software and mapping. Um, how to really get efficient at site assessments. Um, so particularly estimating uh, the more proposals we can get out there, the more work we can win, and the faster we can get on and off a site, but collecting the right amount of information while on site and assessing the trees properly, uh, the more able we can, uh, the more estimates we can fit in in a day. And then finally, streamlining production. This is where you know some of the profitability comes in and gross margin. So how can we help uh, make, make that operation more efficient so that we're increasing our gross margins and making more money at the end of the day? So GIS, uh, you may hear this term thrown around a bit. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's a geographic information system. So computer-based tool for mapping and analyzing things that exist and events that happen on Earth. Pretty straightforward. Um, I like to think of it as if a map and a database had a baby, it would be a G, it would we'd be called GIS. So typical databases, you know, Microsoft Access, uh, you know, CRMs like HubSpot or Salesforce, these are all databases. But uh, when you meld in this data and put this data, attach that data to a latitude and longitude coordinate that can be visualized in a map, this is when it becomes a true GIS. And really, what is the GIS? Uh, what are the benefits of the GIS? It allows users to organize, visualize, and analyze different layers of data by creating maps and scenes. Um, you can clearly visualize. I mean, visualization is probably the biggest um, factor of why GIS is important. You can look at an Excel spreadsheet. You can read data. Um, but if you put that into the context of the real world, it tells a whole different story. And you can pick out certain things visually that you couldn't it would be really difficult to do in, in say a spreadsheet or a database format. So that's one of the biggest things that GIS does for us. And you can un uncover patterns, uh, see trends. Uh, so like, for example, the map on the right, 
you know, this is a typical GIS map. Uh, red is bad, green is good. You know where the bad is, you know where the green, the good is, uh, that type of thing. Again, very basic. Um, some basic concepts, GIS. Um, one of the, one of the, uh, another way to illustrate the importance of a map is uh, through query. So query, you know, we collect data because we want to ask questions about our data, and we want to we want to ask questions that may return some relevant information that we can make a decision on. So databases are really good at that, right? There's filters and queries. Uh, type in keywords. You know, Google search. Type in a word. It's going to say crawl the internet. Say here's all the sites we came back with that word in it. Database is very good at that. GIS adds the additional question of not only what is that, but where is that? Um, uh, ESRI, the creative arc map, probably the 800 pound gorilla in the GIS space. They're kind of the, the biggest uh, creator of GIS software. Uh, they like to say the science of where is their tagline, which I always really like. So in a GIS query, you say not only you know a database, how many customers do I have? Uh, GIS, how many customers do I have and where are they in relation to my yard, other customers, uh, new territories that I want to expand into, those kind of things. So again, it supplies additional information and particularly in a visual format uh, uh, because humans are very visually oriented. Kale, are you on your... No, you're good. Never, never mind. Okay. Making sure the yeah there was a delay on the on the slides, but I think we're good. Um, and we've all used GIS, I'm sure, uh, in the attendees, right? Um, if if you've used Google Maps, you have used a GIS. Uh, I want to search for a restaurant near, uh, not just a restaurant, but I want to search for a restaurant near me or near where I'm going later this afternoon. Uh, Google Maps, simple GIS, and again, it, it puts that context of the real world. Uh, in front of the data. So we can do the same thing with trees. Um, tree GIS is just another data point. It has a location. It ha a tree has a latitude and longitude in the real world. We can attach that latitude and longitude to a tree data point, put a picture of, the, of a map, in this case, a uh, satellite imagery underneath. And then we can really start to visualize where those trees are in the real world. Uh, you can also put other pictures behind, so what we call base, uh, base layer, base maps, base imagery. Uh, there's various sources of that. We like to use uh, Google. Uh, we're big fans of Google all around. Google has amazing GIS capabilities. I'm sure everybody here has also played around on Google Earth, uh, another powerful GIS system. Um, you can also do uh, typical uh, open street maps. So this, the maps that I showed before without, you know, this is an open street map, so it's not real world imagery, but it's a street map and it uh, tells you different things or is you're able to pick out different aspects um, using different base layers. So again, let's do this more for trees. If the whole world is doing this, uh, our industry should be included in GIS. All right, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. I'm going to start talking about, now that we know, understand what GIS is, we all have the same context of what that is. I'm going to talk a little bit about the sales process and obviously as it relates to utilizing maps in the sales process. So here's a typical sales process uh, from a tree care company. Uh, you have a, qual a qualification. Um, the next uh, video will explain that a little bit more. I'll go into that more deeply. Um, once you decide you want to uh, entertain doing that work, there's a, a field assessment. So that's where you're going to the site. You're assessing the trees, creating some recommended work. You're putting that all together in a proposal in the next stage. Uh, once that proposal is accepted, then you're going in and performing the work. That's the operations point. Uh, so you're, you're executing the work, pruning the trees, removing the trees, treating the trees. And then uh, it's always you know good good form to ensure that your customer is satisfied, they're happy, uh, no go backs required, a big one, and of course invoice. And then really like a, a major part, a really low hanging fruit of the sales process is just asking that question of a referral. Hey, do you have a neighbor that may be interested in, in our services since you were so happy, uh, a family member, that kind of thing. I mean, those, those leads are golden 
And uh, you don't have to do very much work for that. If you've done all of these steps properly, referrals are just easy money. All right, so let's go to that first video of Curtis, Kale. If you wanna be a highly profitable tree care business is you have to identify qualified clients. Not all people that ring your phone, not all, oh, it's a big golf course. Oh, this place has 20,000 trees at it. That doesn't make them qualify because that can be an open invitation to a ticket to bankruptcy if you're racing to the bottom with Joe Blow and everybody else. You want to qualify your clients. Now, the clients that you want are clients that want to work with a plan. The clients that are smart enough and they have to have budget. Sometimes they're smart and they wish they could work with the plan. They don't have budget. So you have no business being there. So I don't know about you guys, but pretty much everybody I've ever met, this, these are profit-based businesses. Unfortunately, we're not funded by the government to go take care of people's trees. So it actually, when you say, I'll come out, I'm a highly credentialed arborist. I work with a plant. I'll send them samples. I'll send them a sample. I'll take away personal information. I'll be like, here's what our arborist reports look like. Here's what our maps look like. Here's what our tree management plans look like. Here's the tickets you get on the sign-offs. Is this what you want? I don't even go. I don't even go there. If you won't look at that email and you look at all this value, and you don't want to pay for it, um, then you're probably not a qualified client. But here's what I do tell them: I say, look, this tree risk assessment. I'm looking at it. You look like you probably have about 248 trees by looking at Google Satellite here. Um, we run X amount per tree for the basic list on the tree management plan. I'm gonna build you a tree management plan. It's gonna include, include all these features, which I build through Tree Plotter, And I give them samples of those features so they can see what they look like. Um, and I say to them, I say, look, you could take this tree management plan and put it out to bid. Take it and put it out to bid. And because the scramble you're about to have, Mr. or Mrs., you know, whatever, you're about to have six arborists come out. You're going to get six different opinions, and it's going to range all over the place. You need to get on track and get clear on your goals of what you want to do. And then you need to articulate that exactly the same and then put it out to bid. But here's what you find. Some people will be like, well, I don't want to just do tree bids. I want to do the tree work. Trust me, you want to do a tree work with a plan. Look, if you make a plan and they paid you to do it, one, you got a little bit of money. Two, if, if somebody else wants to take your plan and do the job, well, they weren't a qualified client anyway, because, because you made the plan, you know how much it costs you to do the job and you don't want to do a job that doesn't gain a profit. So again, you win if they turn you down and they won't do it for a fairly priced deal. So anyways, my cost of justification to have a tree management plan is to take the chaos out of what happens when you do tree projects, especially large ones, without a plan to win. If you want to be. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, Curtis Bostono, if anybody you know from the West Coast, uh, he's in the Napa area. Very uh, entertaining uh, tree guy. Um, so, we heard him talk a little bit about qualification. I mean, this is important, I think, in any uh, sales process uh, because you can head off, like you said, a lot of uh, a lot of headache, a lot of uh, jobs that that go sour from the very beginning. You can you can identify. We we've all been there. Uh, identify some red flags before we even start engaging with the customer sometimes or the prospect about they may not be a good customer for us. Um, I know my organization has worked hard, previous organizations, we always had, uh, we developed what's called an ideal customer profile. This is not, uh, you know, this is not proprietary. This is kind of a common business exercise, uh, ICP, as it's sometimes ca is called. But, you know, your business is set up in a particular way, and, and I'm, I'm excited to hear uh, Nick's 
um, webinar, uh, upcoming webinar with Tree Stuff. Uh, he's a really great businessman. He and I talk a little bit, and he's got, you know, like Kale said, a unique business approach. Now he's really understood what kind of customers he desires to serve, how his business is set up, kind of his, the makeup of his crew and his equipment, and the and the and the things that they're good at and find profitable serve a particular type of customer and you can develop this ideal customer profile pretty easily uh, this is just one example um, from from hubspot uh, but there's lots of examples of a way to do this but it's really always valuable to say okay what is and one of the easiest ways to do that is what are my top three customers what do they all have in common you know what 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 is the makeup the demographic uh, information the location you know what what is it about those customers that is consistent among them and those are i want to go after more of those customers it's also a good idea uh to do an exercise of let's look at three five ten of our worst customers where uh, we've had the most problems with don't make as much money and you can develop some red flags uh from those commonalities and those types of customers um you know and it doesn't have it doesn't mean that they're a bad person or a bad customer it just means maybe you know, if they are uh, more of a removal customer, your business is not set up for uh, removals at scale. Well, it's just it's just you can't serve them in the way that they need. So they're really not in your ideal customer profile. So this has helped hugely a lot of sales organizations in really doing business with the customers that make sense for them and and are, are able to kind of consistently uh, uh, create profitable work. Um, I'll just call your attention to the fact that, you know, the location for us is really important. And this is where kind of the tie-in of, of the map comes in because the geographic location, obviously how far or close they are to our yard uh, or to our other points of operations, um, not only geographically, but um, as far as uh, freeways and, and, and how fast can we get to them, uh, look how close are they located to dump sites, things like that. So that's all things you can map out in the software. And again, kind of visualize better than you can just a list of addresses or zip codes. So an important uh, part of your ideal customer profile should be their geographic location as one of those aspects. There's also personas. You can go a little bit deeper into personas. Personas are slightly different. Now, these are kind of a fictitious person uh, within the organization that cares about different things, right? Um, you as the tree care uh, business owner cares about different things than uh, your office admin or your estimator does, uh, but but they are all part of the business. So when you're selling to an organization, it's always a good idea to kind of understand these various roles within the organization, who you're talking to, what they care about, what they don't care about, um, particularly in the context of commercial work. All right, this is what I was uh, referring to, a little bit of geographic qualification. So you want to start going outside of your service area. Um, and, and you, you want to know where to do that. Uh, this is just kind of a, a really uh, quick client uh, map. Kind of took all, off all the labels and things uh, to, to protect the owner here. But, um, you know, one thing uh, that we do in some of our software is color coding and labeling. And so uh, you can start to look at, well, this customer is pretty far from our outside of our uh, territory. However, we we have done a couple of profitable jobs near them. So it seems like we can continue to, that's worth it for us to go out of what we consider our normal territory. Or uh, actually, you know, this, this, this prospect has, uh, has requested an estimate and we have three more right in the same neighborhood that's requesting the estimate. And so putting this into a GIS, color coding and labeling those things, you can kind of, kind of start to call out that information of, well, I can send one estimator to this, to this area and they can knock out all of these estimates uh, in one day because they're grouped in the same location. So um, again, a little bit of uh, kind of sales basics here and, and, and things that uh, we train on and, and I've learned to, to be very useful. Um, the question is really what, what you're asking prospects is why change? You know, why, why get tree work uh, versus doing what they've been doing is not you know, deferred maintenance or not doing tree work, uh, or or why choose your company when they've been working with another company? 
And, and that's just that's that's what sales. That's what, that's really what you're asking. And and you have to answer that question very well to a prospect for the to compel them to uh, acquire your service. So the, if you you can boil down just about every single purchase anyone in the world has ever made is searching for uh, escaping pain or a desire for gain. So everything we buy is, is motivated basically by one of those two things. So it's really important to understand the customer's pain or their desire for gain. And then you can start to build that proposal that really speaks to what they're seeking. Um, you know, I know a ton of times that I've been an estimator and I know better than to recommend topping but in the end, if the customer is really asking for that, you've educated them why that's not a good idea, what, what the risk and uh, uh, down the line will be. You know, they may have a unique situation where that's really what, what, they're, what they're trying to do. Um, and, you know, I know some people just pass that along. Some people say, okay, well, I'll take that job and we'll top your tree. But uh, really understanding that pain uh, so that you can create the proposal that really speaks to them specifically. That makes them build trust that, that you're listening to them, that you're really in it to serve their best uh, interests, not your own. Um, some ways you can uncover that, just, just ask a lot of questions. You know, again, salespeople, we're really good at talking. It's called tell sell, right? We, especially arborists, we have a lot of knowledge that we want to share. But, you know, sometimes just being quiet is the best tactic in sales. Just be quiet, let them talk, ask open ended questions. You know, ask follow-up questions. We, we, ha we in our sales team, we like to role play sometimes and we try to uh, go a, a certain amount of time on a subject without a, uh, saying anything, answering questions with questions. Can we go 20 minutes in a conversation without actually saying anything with only asking questions as a back and forth? So easy ones. Oh, why do you ask? Uh, why is that important to you? Oh, what would happen if you didn't do that? Or what would happen if, you if that did happen? You know, just get a little bit deeper into it. Also, people don't always share uh, kind of their true feelings or their true information right off the bat. Um, so sometimes they'll ask you a question uh, that you think will be important to them, uh, but they're just kind of curious. Like, uh, are you able to schedule me next week? Oh, no. And you start answering the question. Oh, no, I'm not able to schedule it this week because of this. And we're booked and I can schedule next week. And instead, just Oh, why do you ask? Oh, I'm just curious. Okay, well, that's not a big deal. Or, you know what, I have to get this done this week because if I don't, you know, we're, we're putting the house on the market, blah, blah, blah. So you can better understand really what their motivation is. Um, and then the trick is uh, to combine what you've learned from the uh, prospect's pain or desire for gain, combine that with your expertise, put that together in a beautiful package of a proposal, and give that to them, and, and those proposals will always be more successful and have a higher win rate uh, than if you do not go through this process. So, in this, once you once you kind of get this information, I, I I go through that because it's an important part of the sales process. Um, obviously, there's there's not a whole lot of mapping. I mean, Curtis kind of described how he will qualify customers to um, almost as a, a marketing perspective is shows them the map of other customers and say, this is how we manage your trees. Are you interested in this level of management or are you just looking for a provider to come and you know, cut your trees and, and that's it? Or are you really interested in someone who's going to, to take a long-term management approach, uh, you know, diagnose issues and come up with long-term uh, solutions and management plans uh, that will make your property look great and have a sustainable urban forest on your property? Um, again, if you're that type of company, you show them the map, you show them the way that you operate, that doesn't resonate with them, great, we can, not, we can stop business right there because I know you're going to go low bid, that's not really what I'm interested in, uh, here's a couple other companies you can try, right? And you're going to avoid doing that job at break even or worse, lose money on that job because they're, again, not really qualified in your ideal customer profile. So. Uh, We've qualified the customer. They understand uh, the type of tree care company we are and we want to be. And now it's time to go into the field and assess the trees and collect the information. 
So kind of coming back to the software and the mapping, uh, field data collection is one of the uh, most important aspects uh, in any software. And particularly being in the field, sometimes low connectivity, uh, having some offline options is, are always uh, beneficial. But you know, really what this means is uh, you're eliminating a whole step. I know when I was an estimator, uh, we didn't have software uh, to help us out or, or we didn't have mobile software or mapping software. And I would take paper notes. I would take tallies. I would take notes on paper. Then I would have to go back to the office and I would have to convert that into an Excel sheet or into a, a proposal that I would PDF. So there's kind of a multi-step process. I know some people also bring that back to the office and an office admin kind of puts that together. Um, but there's, a, you know, if that's the case too, there's kind of a loss, uh, sometimes a um, lost in translation. So the office admin may not totally understand your notes or really what you're emphasizing. And that doesn't come through in the proposal and it kind of, you, you miss that opportunity and making a really powerful proposal. So by collecting the data inside of the software, you eliminate those extra steps of having to kind of come back and create a proposal. And there's lots of software out, uh, out there that do a really great job of this. Um, you, you're kind of building the proposal as you're collecting the information. I think one way that we are really trying to change this is not just locations of trees, not just here's a dot that represents where this tree is. It's more about uh, collecting a permanent tree inventory and building on that inventory over time. So uh, a couple other advantages that uh, using software in the field helps. So you can create a repeatable process. When I'm out in the field with my notebook, I'm kind of doing things my own way in my own process. Uh, and then another estimator comes out from my same company the next year, and they're gonna do their slightly different variation of what I've done. And, and we do things a little bit differently. With a piece of software, when you're entering information, you can configure exactly what information you, your company uh, wants to collect in order to be successful short-term and long-term. So you can, um, uh, you can really create this repeatable process that is, keeps your brand consistent. So it doesn't matter uh, which estimator is going out to the property, what property they're going to, every prospect and customer gets the same experience of information collected and put forth in a proposal. Everything looks the same. Brand consistency is really important. It, it differentiates, it's memorable. This is the company I like working with because they, they kind of always, I, I know what to expect, right? Or in the service business, we're not really in the tree care business, we're in the service business. What that means is we are serving our customers and, and it's, it's, a, it's very much the relationship with the customer about doing what you say you're gonna do, showing up, being consistent, right? Um, so this is where software really helps. You're collecting the same information, you're putting forth the same information and proposals. It's all very consistent and branded. Um, you have a new estimator coming in or you're training a new estimator. This is a great way to uh, you know, dump them in the deep end, right? But there's some tool that helps guide them through. This is how you should flow through a property. This is how you should do an, uh, an assessment. First, you identify the species then the size, then the condition, then you look for this, then you look for that, and then you, you uh, attach your work uh, to that tree. So you can really help train and onboard new estimators very quickly when you have a systematic approach. And, and again, the software helps box that in. Um, and then faster. Um, this is one of the things we always uh, really focus on, and, and really the game here is uh, we play the game, like, you know, that game, uh, I can name that tune in, in three notes. We play uh, the game, can I do that in three taps, right? Can I do that in three taps of the screen? If I can't, we got to figure out a way how to do that. I can't be tapping around, dragging, dropping, zooming. I have to get in, look at the tree, tap, 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 type in a couple notes maybe, and move on. Because again, uh, to my point earlier, if we can get on the get into the, uh, get on site, assess the trees quickly and, and effectively, get off the site to the next estimate. We can do more estimates in a day, in a week, in a month, grow the pipeline, bigger pipeline, 
means more opportunity to close more business. Um, ultimately, I, I like to think of this as, uh, again, thinking about it not just from dots on a map of locations of trees that are for this particular bid, but building up a tree inventory over time to rely on in uh, future projects, either the work order or the next estimate the next year, so on and so forth. So I really like to think of this as a tree medical chart. Um, you go to a new doctor, what's the first thing they're gonna do? They're gonna look at your past medical history to get up to speed on what you've done, what other ailments, what other medications you've taken, and then that will help them be a better doctor to assess where we should go from here. We're tree doctors, we're the same way. Information is power. So I, I, I kind of joke around cyborg arborist, I'm not actually talking about inserting um, hardware into your brain to become a cyborg. I don't know, Elon Musk wants to do that. Maybe we will one day, um, but uh, kind of a joke there. But really tree is stuff this- is, we're, we're working on that right now. Okay, Tree Stuff has cyborg technology. They are researching and developing. That's awesome, sign me up. Um, so, uh, but no, this helps you be a better arborist, right? If you know, if you're on the first time on the property, your colleagues have always serviced this property. Uh, you don't have to sit down with them, download the whole history from them. Uh, their memory is fuzzy. You know, memory, they say, uh, you know, eyewitness testimony is usually one of the worst uh, pieces of evidence because our memory changes. We don't remember events the same. We have different perspectives. but. If someone's taking the time to enter just even a little bit of information on the tree, the next go around, you're so much smarter because you have that information. Here's what we've done. Uh, here's what work we've done. Here are some notes uh, that will help me uh, a, a diagnose and assess any problems that I see. So really, really powerful stuff to have data inside these tree points on the map. So click a, click a point on the map, bring up the medical chart, Here's all the information about a tree. And not only that, but seeing the past work that you've recommended and how profitable that work was too. So um, did we charge enough for pruning this tree last year? Um, that's obviously really important. No, we didn't, got to mark it up this year. Or yep, we had sufficient margin on that job. So I, can, I know I can, I'm confident that I can charge the same, uh, at least the same on this tree. So send out any estimator. Now all your estimators have the same information. They all have the same knowledge of the jobs and the trees uh, as your whole company. All right, let's go to Curtis, the next Curtis video. So in sales, you know, there's really three circles to get a sale. Circle number one, you have to be instantly likable and trustworthy. So if you're an arborist, you show up, you know your stuff, you're confident, you give them some information about trees and you're, you're a referral or they like you, boom, circle number one. Circle number two is the proposal. What do they want? What is your offer to them? Well, with Tree Plotter, here comes circle number two. I know where all these trees are. They're all numbered. And here's the exact body of work we're going to do for them. And then you can put a master schedule to that. That's circle number two. Circle number three of closing a sale is cost justification. Why is my three acre cleanup $186,000? That really sounds like a lot of money. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. I didn't get any other bids yet. Nobody else has brought me a map. And I'm like, hey, sir, ma'am, let's go through this. And I bring out my inventory of 538 trees and I start with number one. And I'm like, well, this tree's an eight inch DBH. It's $320. Does that seem fair? Oh, well, that seems fair. Scroll on down. Here's a 20 inch tree. It's $980. Does that seem fair? Well, that seems fair. Well, ma'am, we've got this many trees and you can look, to, I give you the report, get back to me in a couple of days. Let me know. And they, it soaks in reality hits. And they're like, I do have a $186,000 problem. And here's the first person with the plan. And you you know, that's costification. So circle one, trustworthy. Two, brilliant proposal. Three, cost justification. Boom, you're selling large scale projects. And that is where the profit is in tree care. It's not Mrs. Smith's front yard. 
Cool. Thanks, Kale. Um, I just want to pause here. I know I realize uh, I get on a roll here. Uh, were there any questions or comments uh, worth uh, exploring here at this point? OK, cool. Yeah, totally. I mean, um, you know, I'm always curious on uh, from a proposal standpoint, what uh has been the most successful element of a proposal uh that you've utilized or that you've seen you know what what is it about the proposal that you think are key elements that either you've tried and now you can't you, you you've seen uh great success with that you do every time and repeat you know whether that's photos or or whatever um let, tell me a little bit about some of the key things that you find really important on the proposal um, so, uh, Curtis talked about his three circles. Gotta love Curtis, uh, animated guy. Um, so what we're talking about in the proposal, circle two, right? We talked about, you know, the, the earlier part of the sales process, qualification, site assessment. Uh, now you're putting that all together. You've done your data collection. Now you're starting to put all that together in a proposal. And and again, in software, uh, this allows you to kind of build these proposals as you're in the field collecting the information rather than kind of going to the second step of compiling all this together. So this is all happening in the background as you're mapping those trees and, and adding the work. Uh, it's all building out for you. So here's kind of a traditional uh, 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 proposal. And this is what you send. You send line items. You know, here's here's what we're going to do to this tree. Here's what we're going to do to this tree. And this is what it costs. Well, I think we can tell a better story. And and really simply using a map can tell a much better story. Um, I like to consider it, you know, a virtual walkthrough. So what does this really say? I have a lot of questions as a homeowner. I may not know which one my Aleppo pine is. I know I have a pine. I know I have a few pines. Which one is my Aleppo pine? Is that the one in the front? Is that the one in the back? Um, what are they talking about here? So I have questions. Um, I'm not sure what they're actually proposing. And why are they, you know, why are they proposing a, a soil injection on this acacia? I don't know. Um, I asked them, you know, to, for pruning on my pine tree. Now there's a, a, a PHC. What is PHC? So a lot of questions that I would have if I was just looking at a typical line item estimate. Um, and we don't always get the opportunity to walk our clients through the property, right? Uh, especially, you know, last year and the year before with COVID, there was actually, you know, restrictions in that. Um, but everybody's busy, right? We, it's rare, uh, more and more rare that we have the chance to kind of walk through the property, point out certain things that we're observing and kind of explain why we are uh, recommending certain work um, to particular trees. Well, that's where the map comes in. And this is the concept of the virtual walkthrough so that you can deliver this online estimate to your to your customer and they can put the kids to bed, you know, clean up dinner. Then when they have a little time, uh, they can go through your proposal, right, and examine it. It's like, OK, wh wh what are they doing to that? Oh, that's the Aleppo pine, right? That one, you know, outside uh, next to my pool. OK, cool. Now I understand. Oh, it looks like they're not doing anything, you know, color coding visualization again quickly understand we're, we're visual creatures so we more quickly understand this picture and if i look at the legend right i see that the work is all recommended on that on that green tree the aleppo they, i have a couple other trees doesn't seem like they're too concerned about those other ones let me dive deeper okay yep that photo I, you know i i know that tree i recognize that tree oh, okay i see they have some um uh, pests that they're identifying, maybe some root system issues. You know, this is why they're recommending this work. Uh, so, you know, really tells that tells that more elaborate story, but they can consume that on their own by themselves. We don't necessarily need to be there to hold their hand and walk them through that. Uh, so, Kale, let's go on to the next video from uh, Alfred Burt, Natural Green Landscape out of Ventura County house and so um the uh essentially i feel that when i provide a proposal my responsibility is to assess every tree um obviously i'm not gonna 
infinitely drilled down on every single tree. But I really do look at that data data collection as as really the key the key part of 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 the whole spectrum. And somebody may say, "Hey, we want a proposal, but right now we only have a budget for this." Um, even though they have a limited budget, what oftentimes what I'll do if they have 300 trees, I will walk 300 and I will identify the ones that I consider what are most in need. So that might be a hundred trees. Um, but what I do is I automatically already have a plan where I can segment over this year and next year. And I tell them the third year, you're probably not going to have to follow a plan. What we can do is we can manipulate some of the information of what we did your priority in the second year to be able to look toward that third year, whether it's budget or being able to process any other uh, um, community needs. Um, removals. Removals is a really good example. Oftentimes, um, we don't have to remove a tree right away. Um, we remove the, the ones that are most significant um, and, and anticipate, hey, this one, this one, this one, we can defer for a year, two years, three years, create a plan. A lot of times I will also recommend that if they do have a um, significant trees that should be considered for removal, hey, rather than us come and do scorched earth removal, why don't the board budget for replacing select trees in certain areas so that you have a nice generation of trees for replacement before you even consider removal. And a lot of times I found that that proactive um, mentality creates a win-win for the boards rather than facing controversy when doing removals. They're able to tell people who do love and care for trees that, hey, here's what, what our removals are. Here's what our plan contribute to our replacement. We can start the plan. And um, that's one of the, I, I would say, key, key characteristics of um, my being able to um, obtain approvals um, okay. where I'm not thinking about, hey, here's the scope that you had provided. I'm really helping to create a plan for okay, here's what you have now. Here's what we would anticipate next year. And, you know, here's another thing, whether it's the removal plan or the replacement plan, and they can allocate those funds. All right, cool. And we're back. Um, so Alfred talked about a lot about uh, good things. Actually, I think I have the videos out of order. So, um, I'm not sure. Kale, Kale, which one was that? What was he generally talking about on that one? Like, yeah, you took the, the sound off. All right, well, Alfred talked about some good stuff. I have the videos out of order. Sorry, it probably has some context of what we're talking about at this slide or <laughs> a couple slides later, but uh, he, he, he generally touches on several different things in his videos. So um, I think one of the key things, uh, and, and maybe we'll see this video uh, later on, but one of the key things he talked about was uh, making a multi-year plan. That's one of the things I wanted to highlight here is, uh, again, the power of visualization with GIS, um, not only breaking up trees and counts into multi-year plans, but being able to visualize where are those trees that they'll be working on this year versus next year versus the following year, which ones are repeat trees, which ones do not need work, um, that kind of thing. Again, it's really powerful in the map uh, aspect that you can you can really easily pick out. And again, those data queries that we talked about earlier, um, filters as, as 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 they're sometimes called as well. You can just isolate those trees. So let's just make a map of the 2021 uh, recommended trees, or let's just make a map of the 2022 recommended trees, or let's make just a map of to show the uh, trees are recommended to be removed uh, for a removal and replacement plan. So lots of, again, powerful visualization that you can do with the GIS querying different things about the trees. Um, show me all the trees that are in poor condition and let's color code those by species or opposite. Show me all, show me all the oak trees and let's color code those by condition. Uh, tells a different story. We as arborists can pick out different trends from that as well. But things we like to share with our customer, again, to say, 
here's why we're generally recommending a, a replacement plan because we've identified several removals that we think we're going to have to do over the next few years. We have been attempting to treat these with, uh, with chemical treatments. Doesn't seem to be doing the trick. Unfortunately, there's probably a, 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 a root issue that we, uh, we cannot correct. And the better thing we'll be to do is, is replant better species, right tree in the right place for long-term success. And again, this, these, this helps justify some of those removal costs uh, by painting this picture and telling the story in a visual format. All right, so let's move on to producing the work now. Um, so we've uh, gone through our qualification process. We've gone out, we've done our field assessment. We've easily collected data on the trees and we've pulled that all together in a beautiful, stunning, visually compelling proposal. The, the prospect says, yes, that's, this looks amazing. Um, you're not the cheapest, but I can tell you guys do really quality work. You really care about what you do. I know you're gonna take care of me and my property. Um, if this is any indication on how doing business with you would be, uh, this is amazing, I'm going forward. Um, another question I have, just put it out there in the, in the quote, I'm wondering if, if you don't have a, an element that you love about proposals, what's, what's some of the worst proposals you've seen? How about that one, how about that question? What's some of the worst, what's the worst example of a, of a tree care proposal, probably that you never produced, but maybe you saw from one of your competitors, What's an example? What 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 was the element of, of kind of the worst proposal you've ever seen in, in tree care? Um, all right, uh, Kale, let me know if there's any answers, any discussions in that. Uh, plug anything in. I'll answer any questions uh, or comments. You know, uh, anything. This should be interactive. Um, okay, tell me tell me I'm way off. I don't know. I'm just one guy, right? I I'm just going off my experience. I'm not uh, the king of, of tree care. I learn new things every day, like to learn things from all of you. Um, this is just my perspective. So, um, you know, tell me, tell me I'm full of crap here. Um, I'm open to that. Let, let's dig into that. Um, all right, production efficiency. So pr the work has been approved. Um, you're able to easily schedule the work in the software, notify your customer of when you're coming. And now you, it's the day of the work and you're ready to deploy your crews uh, for the work. So uh, they, the crews can see what trees they have to work on, even ahead of time, right? From the shop, um, they can open up the work order, get, a, get kind of a feel of the property. You know, I, I know when, when I showed up for a property for the first time ever to produce work, I had to walk through. I had to kind of get my bearings about where the property lines were where the trees were, uh, generally, you know, job safety assessment that we always have to do, identify hazards. Well, can some of this stuff be done ahead of time so that we can sp uh, spend less time on site? And if we spend less time on site, we know we're gonna make more money if we can perform these jobs more quickly by maintaining quality and maintaining safety. If we can get it out of there more quickly, then we're going to make more money on these jobs. So how can we speed these things up? How can we get more efficient? Efficiency in production is usually the name of the game here. Again, if you disagree, tell me in the comments. But that's always been my experience. Um, and so how, can, can the crew get an idea of the property, what trees they need to work on beforehand? And even as soon as they get on site, where, where are those trees? I mean, how many? I don't know how many times I had to get a call um, asking me, you know, I found... 15 of the sycamores. Where's the last sycamore? I can't find it. Uh, is it the tree on the right or the tree on the left? That happened to me. I removed the wrong palm tree. It was at the entrance of a pool. I was talking to my crew. Uh, he was like, is it the one on the left or is it the one on the right? I said very clearly, it's the one on the right. Turns out I was thinking from inside the gate. He was looking from the opposite way outside of the gate. So he did remove the one on the right, but it was the wrong right, wrong perspective. And it cost my company about $18,000 to replace that very expensive palm tree. Um, that was a bad day and a bad week for all of us. So, um, you know, tree mapping, obviously, exactly pinpointing uh, which tree or at least the idea of where the tree is uh, visually is always really beneficial. Fly through this. Um, 
Again, color coding is really important. Visualization, this uh, example, as the crew is checking off, they've completed the work, the tree turns green. Uh, so you're no longer calling the crew, asking them, or, or at the end of the day check-in. Uh, maybe, you're, maybe you're not on site for end of the day check-in. You don't have to have that conversation about how far did you get, open up the app, look at, look at the map, and uh, at the end of the day, if they've checked off the right work, you can see exactly their progress on how they've performed. Um, we're also looking into better job costing aspects so we can uh, tie exactly the price to that tree versus the time it took to perform that work. So you can start getting more granular on your job costing. Um, you know, mo multiple day jobs, you got 60 trees, you, you've estimated it for uh, a crew of uh, five to perform in three days. End of day one, crew comes in, yep, we did 20 trees, we're a third of the way through. Well, did you do the 20 easy trees or did you do the 20 hard trees? There's a big difference there. Uh, again, tell me if you remove the wrong tree, tell me your best remove the wrong tree story. I know we've all done it. Um, I'm, I'm not scared to say that publicly here, live broadcast. Uh, tell me a good story about removing the wrong tree. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can check in, get real-time job costing, you know, real-time run rates is, is what we're working towards so that you can stay efficient and schedule properly too. You can see if a job is, you know, we, we called it burned or smoked. Is, it, is a job going to be burnt? Is it going to be smoked? Basically, is it going to be ahead of schedule or behind schedule? I can throw another crew member on it or, hey, they're going to wrap up early. I should find a job for them that they're going to uh, go to next. And again, using a mapping capability, find a job nearby uh, so that they can maintain that production efficiency. Uh, I mentioned a little bit of job safety assessment too. This is other things we're working on. So uh, can the estimator start to identify things that will help uh, set up the job safety assessment? Now, we always have to do that in the morning on, on site every day. We have to have that discussion with the crew, uh, document that. Um, always really good to document that in the software too uh, for OSHA when they come knocking. If they come knocking, hopefully they don't come knocking. But um, documenting that, that daily job safety assessment uh, but the estimator can also do that ahead of time, right? They can identify drop zones or uh, access points to the job, uh, identify power lines uh, or any kind of other hazards. So, you know, they can start to map out. Um, maps are not just points on a map. Uh, these are polygons. Uh, there's also line strings. So there's three basic aspects of, of GIS mapping, points, lines and polygons, which just means a shape. So you can see these squares here. So you can draw off zones, certain zones of areas, uh, whether they're gonna be no parking zones or uh, these are um, areas that uh, you'll need to rig in, et cetera. So identifying all of these things ahead of time, mapping these out, really, really powerful in having a, a, a very detailed oriented, efficient crew. Um, and, you know, for those bigger commercial jobs, uh, the map also really facilitates customer communication. So um, as, they're, as the crew is rolling through, you can point them to, okay, well, they're, you know, at tree number 320, um, and they're going to be going 319 and 318 next. Uh, the customer can pull open their phone, look at the map, see exactly where they're at. Um, you know, you guys are both remote. They say, great. Just so you know, there's something going on around the corner. You may need to reroute or don't work over there this afternoon. I know we worked at a lot of cemeteries, so uh, there was always uh, funerals that would obviously be, you know, they weren't scheduling when people died. So every day there was a different funeral scheduled. So we had to be really, really on point with our communication with them, um, especially in a sensitive area like that, a cemetery. We don't want to be ripping chainsaws uh, during a funeral. So, um, we had to really make sure and coordinate with everybody about where we needed to be and if we needed to pull out and move uh, in real time. Uh, so the map, kind of studying the map really helped that and we could zone that out and say, okay, zone one is, is off limits today, work in zone three or four, et cetera. So which tree are you talking about? Also, there's several times where we had customers call in and say, hey, we have a broken limb on this uh, tree. I don't know what it is, it's kind of green. It's like on the corner, uh, but it's not the big tree, it's the small tree, the one next to that. Um, so you go out there, I don't know what tree they're talking about, but 
they have access to the inventory, open up their phone, uh, lo locate where they're standing, the closest tree. Okay, it's tree number 167. You can know exactly which tree they're talking about. You can get a little information, go out there, inspect the tree. Hey, you know what? It's okay. Um, it's, it's a small limb. doesn't look like it's going to fall. We'll take care of that on the next round or whatever the answer is. So really efficient communication. Again, we're in the service industry. Um, it's all about taking care of your customer. We're not, uh, you know, yes, we're taking care of trees, but we're taking care of customers more. That's the name of the game in this business. So when, when a customer has a problem, you can hop right on it, streamline that communication. I mean, that goes a long way in, in customer retention and your relationship with your customers. All right, so next video, <laughs> we'll see which one this one is. They're, they're, all, they're, they're all part of the presentation. We're going to provide you a map, a spreadsheet of the work that we're going to complete, and you can go and walk and identify, and it's a check and balance that you are okay. verifying the deliverables that we are providing at the value and cost that, that we're providing. Um, we know that in, in the, um, the ANSI guidelines that we have to have a pre-job walk. Uh, it's a matter of safety. It's a matter of training. There's, there's so many different components that Tree Plotter has provided the capability of protecting our revenue, limiting our losses and, and potentials for, for liability. And that's really the important thing for me. Um, you know, we, I, uh, we don't have uh, a lot of residential tree work. Uh, majority of our, our business market is HOA and commercial. And so us being able to be agile and take care of those segments, um, uh, whether it's co conflicts with vehicles, uh, notification, 48-hour uh, notifications of, of pruning and be able to cycle through properties, um, we use the uh, this tree plotter software to be able to communicate, execute, and um, to be able to propose um, our work. And so it's, it's, it, it's all part of the spokes in the wheel that uh, drives success and, and drives uh, revenue and profit. What other arborist is... All right, cool. So Alfred, uh, reinforcing some of those points I mentioned, and I like his, uh, his spoke. Um, you know, there's, there's several things going on. Obviously map software is not the answer. It's a tool like anything else, uh, but it's one of the tools in your toolkit, uh, to help facilitate, uh, better, um, uh, better business, uh, efficiency and communication. I do real quick have, it, it seems that somebody here has a story that's worse than yours. He's, uh, Ooh, I, I've only seen one tell. guy do it. What made it worse was the homeowner had had uh, nursed it from a little guy, oh. and was very upset afterwards. Oh. So that's, there you go. At least you weren't him. One. That's a tough one. Yeah. So there's a real emotional attachment to a tree. Geez, and uh, gosh, what what if that was like a memorial tree or something for uh, grandma or someone? I mean, that uh, that would be awful. I mean, you can't you can't even monetarily recover from that. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're always kind of trying to educate more and more people of the value and benefits of trees, but there are a good core uh, of people around the world that really do appreciate trees and appreciate the value. And, um, you know, when there's emotional attachment to that, yeah, that's a bad one. In my case, it wasn't that bad. It was just uh, an HOA fool. Probably nobody even really missed it, but uh, we certainly paid for it. That's for sure. But yeah, that's a tough one. That's a real tough one. Um, all right, yeah, and like I said, ultimately communication, you know, uh, so uh, the cloud, I, I think we all probably know what the cloud is these days, but, you know, cloud is just uh, a, a remote servers, uh, usually in out in the middle of nowhere in a giant uh, air-cooled warehouse, a bunch of, bunch of computers that um, are storing all of our data, but that uh, the the information and data is transferring through the inter internet back and forth to these servers for us to add to, uh, manipulate, and view. So 
Um, but we're all accessing this information centrally. And really what cloud software allows us to all to do is we all have the same picture at the same time, right? We all have real time data abilities so that the office admin, the boss, the crew leader, the customer, the estimator, the crew foreman, um, we're all looking at the same thing at the same time. And when we all have that information, that same picture, we can so much easier communicate and operate collaboratively together uh, rather than kind of piecing together information from various places. So that's the beauty of cloud software and, and why, why the world is running the cloud these days. Uh, I think this is final video from Curtis. Kale, did I lose you? Right. Sorry about that. I, the cat was scratching to get in the door. So <laughs> when you can line out your crew with clear, distinct goals and they cool, absolutely you. understand what's expected of them, um, that's winning. And you want to be able to celebrate winning with your clients and your employees every day. And that's what creates a company culture uh, that's positive and they're excited about Mondays and they tell their friends and family about their winning at work. Um, and with tree plotter, you can explain the plan and line out everyone for success. Secondly, when you have the maps, you have the technology, things happen. You might be on one section of the property. You thought you were going to do trees 36 through 51 that day, and that was your financial goal. And everybody's getting set up, and there's a sewer problem at the HOA, and rotor rooters coming in, and there's no way we're working there. You're on another job site two and a half hours away. Your crew calls you, and they're like, we're not going to be able to work here. This place is flooded. And then you go, hold on a second. You bust out your laptop. You bring out the spreadsheet. You look at the area. They're like, oh, they're over here on 36 through 51. We need to move them over here to section 301 through 360 and have them do those 59 trees today. And you don't have to show up or nothing. You can take a data sheet. You can spread, uh, print it out send it over to them. They know what trees, where to find them. You never even had to go out there. In the old days before the technology, you'd be like, oh man, look, I'll be there. I'll be there in two hours and just try to take a lunch now. And it, it cuts the scramble out. You can call audibles and also you're setting up your plans to win and clear and distinct goals for your team. Cool. Thank you. That's uh, again Curtis uh, from uh, Napa County area. Um, so yeah, I um, Curtis just kind of another uh, example of of collaborating and communicating and and, and uh, leveraging the map uh, for communication because we're not on site. I mean, he, he had the term audible. Man, how many audibles have we had to call in, in our tree care experience, right? It seems like it's almost a daily occurrence um, where we're shifting things around, equipment breaks, uh, whatever. I mean, I think, you know, again, put it, put something crazy that, that causes an audible in the comments, but you name it. I mean, bird nesting, it just it, it, everything under the sun uh, changes the, the, the nature of tree work. You know, estimating a, a property on a weekday where everybody's at work and there's no cars around. And then we go to do that work on Saturday and there's just cars parked everywhere. What are you going to do? So, um, again, using that map, facilitating communication, we can all see the same thing. We can be in the real world without being on site in the real world. Uh, and, and that's huge. Um, so uh, I think ultimately my 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 key home takeaway really in as a, as a sales professional and as a, a former tree care professional is it's about service right high margin is, is just all about service we're, we're we're taking care of customers sometimes more than we're taking care of trees 
And service is a lot about communication, effective communication, showing up, doing what you say you're going to do consistently. And I think that the software helps uh, everyone do that, makes it more efficient so we can handle a volume of customer communications, handle the volume of estimates and proposals, handle the volume of work, uh, work operations, uh, leveraging the power of technology. Um, so probably my, my, my last key takeaway, I think, uh, oh, sorry, I do have one final video from Alfred. Because one, we took the effort to go out and collect the data and we had that initial uh, investment of time, research and communication with, with the property managers to, to, to say, you know what, these guys stepped up. Um, yes, it's a little bit more, but you know we're getting so much more value and we're getting that plan for the future. Um, there was another community that I was asked to propose and uh, um, very simply there was 450 trees. Another uh, vendor had been uh, pruning the trees, but they weren't getting a value that I think I would provide. Um, the very simply, the community uh, was paying twenty thousand a year for the last um, uh, amount of time, and when I walked the property, I saw that there were several large leaders that were going over buildings. They were leaning over patios, so um, I felt that there was a lot more mitigation pruning that we could do while still pruning, thinning, and 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 providing value to the community. We ended up obtaining approval, even though we were, uh, I would say roughly a third more than the other vendor because of the photos, the maps, the spreadsheets, and being able to show that, you know, hey, you lose one errant branch over a roof with Spanish tile, you're going to pay a lot more than 5000 to 10000 per for, for, for each failed branch. And so the amount that the, the other vendor had been I wouldn't say comfortable. Um, I, I feel that, uh, you know, being able to show the difference in the perspective that, you know, if we do this different, you can minimize what you're going to spend over the next year to two years, three years, and, and, and minimize uh, capital, capital expenses. They were able to uh, see the benefit and we ended up obtaining approval over the vendor that had two to three years we have cool uh thanks kale uh again alfred i think um for me what what he was demonstrating there uh was he was selling on value not selling on price uh i think that's another key takeaway here is uh you want to sell value not the price you know we all talk about racing to the bottom uh, unfortunately, we all uh, still do it from time to time, but we don't want to do that. Um, we want to sell on value. And if you can, you know, kind of to Curtis's earlier point, justify your cost in a way that shows the value of why you're recommending work that may be more costly than the next guy, um, you can win on value. It doesn't have to be all on price. And I think that, you know, part of my mission. Um, in creating this type of software is to really help my fellow tree care, um, my fellow tree care people uh, sell on value because they're, that we should be recognized as an industry that does provide real safety and health uh, benefits to our communities. Um, and, and people should really understand why that's important and be willing to pay for that. And if you can tell that story in a compelling way, uh, then you can win on value. You don't have to be the cheapest person uh, in, in, in the area. Um, people will pay more for value. So it's just about explaining that value. And again, I, uh, my mission is to create software that will help do that. It's kind of cliche. There's a lot of us to say we do things to help you know, raise the industry rising tide raises all ships. Um, I'll go ahead and, and say the cliche. I really am trying to, to, to raise the industry here by, by 
enabling arborists to better communicate the value of what we're doing and tell that story uh, through our proposals that, you know, hey, this is something really important to invest in uh, for the long term. So I'll get off my soapbox uh, on that one, but uh, I hope you all agree. If you agree, let me know in the comments. If you don't agree, tell me I'm full of crap. Tell me it's all price. Like I said, I'm just one person. This is my opinion based on my experience. Um, but, uh, but I have seen evidence of this uh, in, in, a lot of, in a lot of cases. All right, so thanks for uh, bearing with me here through, uh, I guess we're about an hour and 20 minutes, um, two CEUs uh, that we can get, even though it looks like we're going to maybe cut out just a little bit early, unless we have 40 minutes of conversation here, which I doubt. But uh, anyway, now is your time. If you got a question, you got a comment for the group, I'm happy to repeat it um, out here uh, for everybody. But um, I just wanted to share a little bit about like what's on the horizon, uh, just generally uh, for us, for other companies, uh, for technology. Um, like I said, real-time job costing, that's a really valuable tool to see, you know, really what are your run rates in real time? Are, are you are you ahead of the ball? Are you behind? Are you ahead of the game? Are you behind um, in real time? So you can make those just scheduling decisions or, you know, motivate the crew uh, to finish or or whatever the case may be, make those decisions based on real time information about how those jobs profitability is going uh, in close to real time as possible. Uh, fleet management, uh, another thing that we're looking at. So uh, again, important part of GIS is where, uh, where are your trucks, where are your tools? Uh, did someone leave a chainsaw behind? Anybody ever do that? I haven't, but a crew member has, it stinks. Uh, ever gotten your tools ripped off? I have. It stinks. Um, where are those tools now? Hmm, that would be a good thing, right? Um, can we shut off the tools for operation if they go outside a certain boundary at a certain time? Uh, things like that. So things that technology can start to solve. Um, geographic marketing analysis. This is a fun one. Um, you know, look at areas, uh, and help analyze uh, regions of the of your territory that you're more profitable. I think it may surprise some people to see that they are sometimes more profitable in areas that are not actually closest to the yard. Uh, maybe certain uh, affluent areas or non-affluent areas. Uh, you don't really know, let the data tell you. Um, data has a tendency of proving you wrong a lot. Uh, you know, we, we have bias, we're naturally biased creatures. Uh, it's hard for us to avoid our bias. The data doesn't lie, assuming it's good data and uh, relying on that to better market uh, who, who should we be going after again, that ideal customer profile, um, where are the trees that I'm most profitable on? Am I more profitable on removals? Am I more profitable on pruning? Uh, am I more profitable on pruning in this area than this area? Uh, am I more profitable on oak trees in general, species, uh, things like that? So kind of analyzing where where I'm most successful and let's repeat that success moving forward. And then uh, as we all know, machine learning, artificial intelligence is all the rage coming. It will come into our industry eventually. Um, we're already starting to experiment with that. So again, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the computer is starting to learn your business and making predictions on things that will occur. So if you have, you know, this type of estimate in this area, um, we, you know, this, this will be good or, or not so good. So um, having, having the data lake, as we say, just pouring a bunch of data, having the machine kind of continually learn uh, the trends and then tell us uh, what those trends are. So really exciting stuff in machine learning. There's all kinds of applications. I could go on and on with machine learning. Um, and then augmented reality, uh, slightly different than virtual reality. So augmented reality, is, there's a picture up in the top right here. So pulling up your, usually your phone and it's putting digital elements kind of on top of the real world. So you hold your phone up to that tree and then you get information about that tree just by kind of scanning your camera over there. Um, so you can, you can kind of see additional information while you're in the real world. Also, I see a really good application for this. Sometimes we annotate photos with particular limbs that we want to remove. And uh, that's always a challenge on describing that to a crew if you're not there. 
So uh, augmented reality will kind of allow you to mark that in a digital space. The crew will hold, so you're not tagging trees, right? You're not putting any kind of physical marker on the tree. You're putting a digital marker on the tree. The crew can hold up their phone to that tree and they can see the limb that you've uh, annotated of which one to remove uh, from any angle. So some, some applications that uh, we're exploring and are really excited. Uh, let me know what your uh, next technology evolution that you're excited about in the industry um, or not. Uh, Kale, any questions, comments? Do you know if uh, do you know if single ops integrates GIS plotting on their work orders apart from address coordinates? Um, I'm not sure uh, exactly. I know they have some uh, generic mapping capabilities. I'm not going to speak too much on it. Uh, I'm not as familiar. I think they have some kind of tree marker element. Um, that's about as much as I know about their software. Mm -hmm. Uh, Travis Burleson wants to know if you have a go-to line when someone asks you why your price is higher uh, and how you show value in the conversation. That's a great question. Um, well, I, I start to ask questions about, uh, again, it kind of it's kind of goes back to those qualification questions. If I've done a good enough job, then I really understand uh, their pain or their desire for gain. So one of my favorite questions to ask them is, well, what would happen if you didn't use our solution, right? Let, let's talk about that. What happens, what would that cost you if you didn't uh, implement a solution here? And we'd go through a story and I'd, I'd kind of I'd pull them through the story of, of like, okay, that sounds costly, that sounds painful, that sounds inefficient. Um, and you, I, I like to have them kind of come to the conclusion, right? Again, a lot of questions. Why is that important to you? Oh, that's interesting. Just curious on why you would say that. Or, and, and honestly, that, that's really it. Asking a lot of questions, and a lot of times they'll come to their own conclusion before you can even say, well, it sounds to me like $3,000, $5,000 would be worth it to uh, avoid whatever pain you're describing if you didn't do this or if you chose the other guy or... What was the what was your experience when you did go with a low bid last time? Um, so typically, again, good question asking. Let them come to the conclusion of uh, why it would be valuable to uh, not pick the cheapest alternative. I hope that helps. Mm -hmm. um, let me know if anybody has comments on that. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's a great question. That that's a tough one. It's a tough one to train yeah. yourself to do for sure. Yeah. Um, here's one. Um, Patricio A. Sepulveda, I'm sure I pronounced that incorrectly, um, said that uh, for Arboretums, augmented reality would be fantastic. Um, that'd be pretty cool. Garrett Daniels, yeah. Garrett Daniels asking if you need cell service or if uh, uh, this system will work um, offline until you're back into a service range. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer. I'll answer the comment um, and the offline question. But the comment on our readums, absolutely. Uh, we're experimenting. Uh, we have a kind of a beta version of a tree tour uh, for our readums and um, other. You know, college campuses are even not technically an our readum. Uh, our uh, college campuses and even like memorial tree walks. Uh, we work with uh, Audubon Park in New Orleans. Um, they have some amazing trees. If you've never been down there. Uh, highly recommend it, but they have these tree tours and, you know, QR codes are okay, um, but augmented reality, absolutely for the tree tour concept and the Arboretum for people to just hold, you know, everybody has the tool in their pocket, hold up their phone, get more information about what tree they're looking at. Absolutely. I love it. Um, offline capabilities. Uh, yes. So um, our software does have an offline mode um, and others, other softwares do. So the idea, at least um, the way we're deploying it, is uh, our software is all web-based. And so uh, when you, you can go into an offline mode and you can cut connection completely, so you kind of load the map ahead of time. That's one of the kind of limitations to this. But 
before you get to the site while you have internet connection. You load the, um, uh, load the map uh, onto your device, and then through the software, you go into the field, uh, then you collect the data. Uh, you can zoom in, zoom out of the map. You can see everything. It operates just like it's online. It's actually uh, caching and storing in the browser. So your browser has the capability to store information while you're offline. Uh, it's caching information. And then when you get back to the internet, uh, you just sync. And then it syncs right back into the cloud. And then it gets into that real-time map. Uh, we're also working with some uh, native app technology. And ultimately, our vision is to uh, uh, execute uh, the experience where you're not messing with uh, uh, loading up ahead of time, but you're in the field, the software knows when your connection is dipping, it automatically kicks into an offline mode, starts uh, storing locally on your browser or within the native app, and then when it, when it does get sufficient connection in the background, just reloads that back into the cloud, and then you get back into the real-time mode. You don't even know that that's happening, it's all happening in the background again, um, future things that we're exploring uh, as experience. But I think that's really the ideal uh, experience that we're, that we're searching for, and, and the technology is there to do it. Um, I have another one here. Uh, Lee Brandt, do you have any clients that use this for lawn care or noxious weed management? Uh, yeah, we do. So I mentioned, um, you know, we have a couple different products, uh, and, and one product uh, called tree plotter inventory is very um, GIS centric. So we have jobs. It's more of a workflow software that you can create estimates and, and work orders and proposals and invoices. But again, with the um, ability to map and inventory trees within that. Um, and then we have inventory that's really uh, typically a, um, a, a municipal use case or a grounds use case. Um, and I mentioned we can you know, it's not all about points, but we can map polygons. So we actually have a new zone layer that uh, we have enabled for, for tree care. But um, yeah, we have a, a, another product called Parks that kind of utilizes this. So you can map out turf areas. Um, the cool thing, again, about GIS is that you draw a polygon and trace the lawn area from the aerial imagery. And then it will calculate the square area for you. So you can um, run some uh, estimates or analysis on, on that. Um, and then noxious weeds, yes, we have a couple customers that are using uh, IPM uh, elements. Um, we have one that's very complex that has to go through, uh, they're, they're a county government, and they have to go through several layers of, of approval and, and have a um, pest control advisor and interact with the software to approve certain uh, chemicals. So uh, yes, and then one fun one, I mean, it's not, uh, it's not noxious weed, but um, we have one customer uh, that's, that's an airport, major airport, um, and they, they are managing their trees, but they're also managing their uh, rat traps. So they have all their rat hmm. traps, uh, so we kind of joke it's, it's rat plotter, um, but they're, they're monitoring uh, through the software uh, the rat traps. Um, which actually brings me to another uh, interesting technology of remote sensing. So. There's also something we're really excited about. As sensors, remote sensors get cheaper uh, and more accessible, you can have sensors on trees that will tell the software uh, what's going on. So if there's dry soil uh, or some kind of other uh, weather uh, issue um, or vandalism, things like that, send off an alert to the software and you can help manage uh, your tree population. More of a municipal use case, but. Um, yeah, there's uh, there's all kinds of. That's the beauty of GIS is like it's it has so many different applications. Um, really, anything uh, in in the world uh, you can manage with the GIS. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Well, thank you very much for your time and for uh, uh, presenting this to us. And uh, I think that was some great information. Uh, is there what is the website that you can go to to learn more about? Uh, Plant Geo and, and the different products. Oh, there we go. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, thank, thank you for reminding me to flip mm -hmm. that slide. Uh, the boss would be very unhappy if I did not do this oh, yeah. one. Um, okay. Yeah. So it's just planetgeo.com and it's spelled plan it, like we're planning something, plan it, uh, geo.com. That has all of our information, has our software. We also offer uh, consulting services, so we do tree inventories usually for 
municipalities. Uh, we do urban tree canopy assessments. That's always a fun one. So we take remote sensing, measure the total canopy cover of a certain area where there's not canopy. Lots of fun stuff. I could go uh, take another hour into that one. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, urban forest management plans. So we, we create, we help consult on urban forest management plans, again, usually for governments. Uh, and then has all of our software products on there. Um, here's some good emails and phone numbers if you want to take those down. Uh, you're welcome to email me directly at evansims at planetgeo.com. Happy to just, uh, you know, know who you are, answer any questions uh, from, from, from one tree person to another. Um, and uh, if you're ever out at PCIA, we always have a booth, stop by the booth. Uh, and we're out and about. We like to do a, a lot of conferences and trade shows. So, you know, stop by your next conference. Perfect. Great. Well, thank you very much uh, for being with us. And thank you, everyone, for watching. I have posted the uh, link to the quiz for the CEUs in the comments section, and I'll also post them on our Facebook page here in a minute. Uh, and uh, have a nice night. And thank you, Kale. Thank you to Tree Stuff. Uh, love partnering with you, and uh, look forward to more. Yeah, great. Okay.